So, everybody awake? Enjoyed the food? Well, no. <laughs> Well, we're going to vote at confidence and speed. Well, we're not open for our food holiday. So Ingo's going to talk about the state of time management. Yeah, I want to talk about the office. I want to talk about the office. Before last year, there wasn't much of a different management like at all. It was always a kind of a roadblock for the R1 release. Um, but it's a, a quite a big project, so no one really dared to tackle it. Tackle it. And this year we got funding from, from uh, IQA uh, and had two contracts for uh, one month uh, each. Oil uh, and me working on equipment management. And uh, yeah, we made quite some progress, although we are not. And I'm going to talk about a bit, um, yeah, why agent man management, what's the current state, how does it work, um, what's the what's left to do. So, um, why package management? Um, well, for one, it's needed, and uh, the other one is it's even convenient. So, we want to have it. So, why is it needed? Um, let me first talk about the situation of US and Python. The current Python. Um, yeah, we have different kind of package, different kinds of package management in, in the US and Python. First of all, there were the uh, software developer packages, packages um, which had, uh, had a um, package installer and package which uh, installed those packages in the system. Um, then um, the, uh, the other kind of um, uh, packages were the zip files of, of different varieties. First of all, those uh, self contained um, zip files, which uh, were mostly used for applications. They contain all the applications needed, um, and when you handled them, they uh, we created a directory which contained all the application needed. You could uh, start the application from, uh, from within the uh, directory and um, it will just run, and you could also move the, the directory around, that would still, still work. And when you are, um, and you wanted to de install the application, you could just delete the directory. Um, the second kind was the, the block gear installation kind of zip files. Um, you unzip them and uh, got some content, and uh, one or more links um, that were named, as uh, soon links that were named dropped, uh, dropped here, or dropped library here, or dropped whatever here. And those were pointing to the, uh, the directories where certain files needed to be installed. So we could just drag one file um, to the symlink and it was uh, installed there. Um, this was uh, often used for things like drivers and accounts, which needed to uh, be placed in a certain uh, directory um, in, the, yeah, in the home config uh, directory structure. Then there are a few other varieties uh, like the file that came with an install script, there yeah, was just a shell, a shell script or something um, in the install script uh, in the um, uh, zip directory, and you double click the thing and it installed whatever files were in the uh, zip file to wherever uh, it needed to go. Um, there was also um, uh, very lot of ports from um, uh, of open source software. Um, most notably, there was deep gadgets, which uh, was a site that uh, contained more or less all the ports you could imagine <coughs> from, um, from other systems. Uh, um, and um, those uh, zip files were, if I recall correctly, just zip files you had to install and uh, you had to unzip in a certain directory so that you were mostly like on front. And the uh, pack, I think, works. Similar, but it was later by Marcelo Schmitzky. Um, and I think those either had to be added as well or had an install script. And those were the OSS uh, ports. And um, well, most recently, we had the micro optional packages, which are also zip files that need to be unzipped in some 
uh, fixed location. Um, so basically, these, there, there are two kinds of, of uh, packages we are talking about. There are first the uh, self-contained application zips that you can unzip and work everywhere, anywhere. And there's a, there's a kind of package you need to install somehow in the system. Place it in a certain directory or whatever. Mm. Obviously, we don't need package management for the first kind of uh, packages. They just work. Um, uh, yeah. There's no not any uh, yeah, not any um, steps you need to do to install those. And you also don't have any steps to install those and un, um, uh, save from just thing. Um, but the second kind of uh, packages that need some kind of installation, um, those actually need a package management. Um, because there are several uh, issues with, uh, with those. Uh, kind of pages. Um, yeah, we uh, can't like you have no um, management for those packages you have installed already. They are unzipped uh, somewhere or installed in some way, but um, you don't know really you have no uh, overview of what, what is actually installed. And um, that's also why you can't really deinstall them unless they come with uh, some uh, custom uh, deinstallation. De um, you update those packages usually by um, picking a new um, package and unzipping it over it uh, over the already installed package. So uh, that works if the files are named the same, but if they aren't, then you have leftover files, or maybe you get you get, you get clashes that, that make uh, things not very well. And if you recall the gadgets, you actually have dependency of uh, those packages. Because so the packages depend on the other packages, maybe, and to um, get everything working, uh, you needed to track down all the dependencies manually. <coughs> I think the hack is all of this by just um, putting together all the, all the open source software in one big package and installing uh, them. So most of people, uh, most people were served by that. But, uh, it wasn't really a solution because the, the update uh, problem was. Uh, so. And for, uh, for solving these, um, this is really deep the uh, uh, package management. Um, the other reason uh, for our package management is what I already mentioned convenience. When you have a nice package management application, uh, a graphical one, for instance, then you can just uh, search for applications you want to install or other software. Uh, and install it basically with, with one click. Um, we also, the payment is also possible to have some um, update uh, mechanism, mechanism that is uh, automated, like what we have for, uh, yeah, on Windows with Windows updates uh, or with uh, on Linux, they all have some kind of automatic, automatic uh, update me mechanism that uh, notifies you that some new updates are available that fix. Um, under bugs or important security uh, issues. And this is something we really uh, also get out of um, Yeah, Neugarn and I started working and, uh, and blogging. <laughs> um, still about our, our work in package management. There were a lot of comments, uh, particularly in, the, in these blogs. And often uh, one heard the comment of uh, like, I will become as crappy as, as Linux if you have package management. And from my experience, at least in the last few years, um, I had very little uh, problems with uh, package management in Linux. In the early days, it was a help, um, but uh, with the emergence of, of um, meta package management, um, it was uh, pretty well, I think. Most of the problem to most of the problems actually come from packages you don't use outside of the regular application network. Like so having scripts to yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, of the the or if you work around it and install something manually, then yeah. you might uh, clash with the thing. <coughs> Another argument um, was that Mac OS and Windows don't have package management either, and they were, but that actually is not true. Windows uh, they have 
most of these settings can, uh, uh, settings can contain applications, but those all come to their um, setup uh, application, which basically is an installer. And um, those applications are registered uh, in Windows. And when you here want to deinstall them, you have um, a deinstaller. Um, Windows Update itself is basically package management. Notice uh, notifies you uh, regularly uh, about updates and installs them, download, download, and whatever. And um, a lot of um, applications just have their own custom uh, updater, like Firefox comes with an update solution that reminds you uh, uh, whenever a new update is available, or uh, Adobe Flash, or Java also has update uh, solutions. I think in the case of Flash and Java, it's actually the background uh, application that runs the whole time. And, uh, and no Chrome, Chrome does it without telling you. Sorry? Chrome does it without telling you. Ah, okay. I don't use Chrome. <laughs> um, and actually, you, you have also open source software on, on um, Windows, and I think the most notable is uh, Sigma, which is. Um, the self contained universe, which also comes with the Mac OS. Mac OS has self contained application bundles. You can download them, which are just work out of the box. But for um, open source software, you have uh, at least two different um, sort of package solutions which are Mac and Ding. Mac OS and Mac Ding. I don't know much about Mac OS, but I think that is. <laughs> Well, fix, not really maintained much more, so it's brew, backports or brew. Okay. But, yeah. Anyway, at, at least you have one thing. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so the, um, the statement that other operating systems don't affect them either and work is not really true. Um, yeah, that's actually something. I started uh, by looking at the existing package management solutions, of course, as they saw it. And um, we've grouped them as they do well. The ones that work pretty much similar. And um, what uh, we, um, all the big um, Linux solutions come with pretty, uh, well, come with package management that work pretty much similar. You have repositories that contain the packages somewhere in the network. You have a uh, local tool that can install a single package, and you have the Meta packager that brings the whole thing together, that collects all the available packages from the repositories, then um, presents it to you either graphically or on the command line, and you just use that tool to install um, install packages. And what that means, what installation then means, is they get downloaded, all the dependencies get are getting downloaded, and a uh, packages well. Uh, unpacked on and spread and uh, uh, yeah, the files that contain a special system and uh, sometimes even scripts um, do something in the background too. And they sometimes uh, they um, implement some kind of transaction system in order to uh, minimize the risk of the system going and uh, breaking completely should the process be installing um, one package of all the dependencies stop uh, and um, but that is really a bit fragile because it's really not possible to do atomic installations of packages that way. Um, yeah some do some build that from source uh, but in the end you just they just have a binary version and install that. And 